Hello everyone. In this lesson I want to show you how we could light a scene. Lighting is very important when we're creating concepts and we can create different moods just through the lighting alone. Sure we could add some more photos onto this and photo bash and add more into the scene and there's certainly a place for that but for this lesson I just want to show you how we could change the the mood of the scene just through lighting. I am also going to add some more images. So I've got some reference images here that I could add into the scene. We can create different themes. So let's say, for example, we take this scene and we could change it into a scene where it looks like it's been abandoned. So perhaps some of the paper doors here have been smashed through and it's been left uh, derelict. So outside it's gonna get very uh, dusty and we're gonna see more foliage on the outside. Or we could have it uh, where the doors are left open and the snow has trickled in. Okay, so I've got some snow reference here. Or I could even experiment with having uh, some sort of flames outside. So there's some sort of war going on outside of this interior scene. So we're going to experiment with all those themes just within this one image. Now I haven't uh, experimented with this image, so I'm doing this live. So let's see how this goes. The first thing I'd want to establish is what am I working with? Okay, so I'm going to try and find a base image where I've got at least three walls to work with. Okay, so I'm looking into the scene and I'm also establishing where the light already is within that scene. Okay, so the strongest point of light here is right through this left hand side window okay we've also got the shutter doors open so we can have a bit of light bleed through and there is a little bit of light here but we might want to emphasize that even more within our concept make it just to look a little bit more cinematic the roof is fairly high on this so we can't actually see any kind of lights above this scene but we could always add some lights i've got some ref reference here okay so i could add this beam and add this light. So we'll experiment with that. And I'm also gonna establish what aspect ratio is my image currently at. So this is set to about uh, the same size as my screen, but I'm just gonna crop this down slightly and make it look even more cinematic. Okay, so it's very widescreen. Okay, that's looking good. Here we can see that there is some slight distortion. So there's a slight barrel distortion here with a almost three point perspective. If you wanted to straighten that up, then you could double click on your background layer, create a new layer from that. You can always name these layers, so I could call this base. And we could press Control T to free transform, right click and then go to skew. And then here we could skew this slightly if you wanted this to look more straight. Okay, we could also do something like that if you need to make any adjustments. Press enter, and now it's straight. I might just press control T again just to uh, skew this out slightly. Press enter again, and there we go. Right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a curved mask Okay, so select here and select curves. And I'm going to bring the light down. So here, this point is going to increase the light all the way up to white. And this node is going to bring it all the way down to black. Okay. So we can select in the middle and that's going to create a new point. And we can bring this down and that's going to control our contrast. So I'm going to bring it down slightly to make our contrast even more darker. And then I'm gonna bring this one down to make it a little bit darker and then just keep going down. And there we go. We don't wanna to go too far because then our entire scene is black. We still want a little bit of information there. So I'm just gonna bring this up and that's looking pretty good. So this slider will make it look flat. We can see it's actually flattening those lighter colors there. So I'm going to bring it down just to kind of uh, mask out these white areas. Ideally, you don't want anything that's completely white or completely black. So white is light itself and black is the absence of light. So we want to try and 
avoid that. So I'm going to bring this down slightly. Okay, that's looking okay. And then we can close this down. We'll go onto our brushes. I'm going to select my uh, soft brush. I'm then going to increase the size of this brush and then just very lightly tap in the center and bring some of that light back. So before you start painting over the entire thing, you're going to want to think, where's my light source? So in this case, there's going to be a bit more light coming through this window. I'm going to have it trickle down into the scene. So it's going to light the top half of this pillow. Same here, this tray. And then that's at the center section here. If you feel like it's still not dark enough, we can always go back into this curve and bring this down. And then go back into our curve mask and add the light. Okay, so it's just a subtle change there. If I turn this on and off, we can see there's a slight vignette around the, the sides now. And now our focus is more in the center with that vignette. So say I was going to, uh, oh, I've just noticed here, there's a little bit missing there. If you've got anything that you need to duplicate, I often use the spot healing brush tool and just run over that and it should remove it. It is too close to the edge. So I'm going to have to go back to my base, press control T and then just drag this out. There we go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a slight color correction. So I'm going to go back into here and go to color balance. And if I want to make it cooler, then I can move the midtones more towards blue. I could move uh, the midtones more towards cyan if I want to make it even cooler. And I can experiment with moving this more towards magenta or green depending on how you want to color grade this scene. So for me, I'm going to keep that fairly in the center. I might just change that back to zero. I'm going to go onto our tones and select highlights. And this time experiment by adding maybe a um, blue highlight or maybe a slightly warmer highlight. Okay, so I'm going to move this more towards red and then more towards blue. It's looking pretty good. Turn this on and off. So that's how we could make our warm scene look more cooler. If I just turn this off and do the same thing again, back to color balance, on the midtones, I could move this more towards yellow and more towards red. Back to midtones and go to highlights. And you can experiment by doing the opposite, more towards cyan, more towards blue if you want a, a cool highlight. Or more towards yellow. But I, I find that if you do um, more warm tones, the whole scene kind of looks w washed out. So you want a contrast between warm and cool. After all, if it's um, sunny outside and it's um, a predominantly warm color palette, then the shadows are actually gonna be cool. So keep that in mind. Okay, so there's the two different versions. There's a slight change there. We just got some cooler highlights and then this one is much cooler. And you can go over it. You can go back here and you could do something like a color lookup, which is essentially like, um, like an Instagram filter. And we can go up to the top and then just scroll through and you might find an effect you like. That looks very um, much like an old photo. Okay, much cooler. That's very Blade Runner. That's pretty cool. This one's great if you want a, a um, cool
cooler mid-tone. So you could select something like this, it says foggy nights, and then you could use the opacity and just drop that down a little. So if you had this in conjunction with your cool color balance, you could go back into your color balance and just make another selection here. So you might just want to go back into highlights and just bump up some of the yellows or bump up some of the reds. And you can also go to shadows. I tend not to play around too much with the shadows. But here I could move this slightly more towards yellow, a little bit more towards red. And then this one a little bit more towards magenta. And if I turn all of these off and go back to the beginning, we can see the difference there. So I would say this one looks, um, it kind of looks like a stock photo, but as soon as you start to add these effects and you start color grading it and adding that curve, it's looking a lot more cinematic now. Okay. And then this one on top, there's another color balance there and that's adding that um, much cooler light source. So I could just bring that down slightly, just have a mixture of the two. There's a shortcut on the keyboard to uh, flatten all of this and put it directly on top of all these layers. If you select the top layer, you can press Control, Alt, Shift and E on the keyboard. And that flattens all of it and puts it directly on top. So if I just turn all these layers off, then you can see the results there, before and after. Okay. So I'll delete that one for now, and I'll turn all these back on. And let's try adding some photos. So let's go into our snow scene, and let's have a look what we've got. I might need to collect some more reference. For now, let's just drag these on. So I'm just going to drag it onto the scene, bring this back up here. make it look like this is um, away from the door there so maybe something like that and I'm just gonna bring that opacity down and just see what that looks like right there that doesn't look too bad okay and I'll make a mask of this just in case I need to move this selection around. So here I'm going to create my mask. And then I'm going to select my rectangular tool and select around this door. I'm just holding shift here just to make that selection. And there we go. And I can then fill this. So edit, fill, and I've got black selected on the foreground, so I'm going to select Contents Foreground Color, click OK. And then I'll turn this opacity up and see how this looks. So it doesn't look too bad. I've noticed here we've got this um, handrail here. I'll need to remove that. So I'm just going to use the uh, Spot Healing Brush tool, make sure our photo is selected, and then just run over this. There we go, that's done that pretty well. And let's see, does that work? First thing we'll need to do is just to erase this image. So I'm going to go back into my layers here. So I've got my mask selected. It's selected on black. And then I'm lightly just going to tap on here just to remove it. There's a bit of grass in between there, so I'm going to drop this opacity down. And then just erase where this towel was, or this cloth. Bring the opacity back up. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm then going to select a new layer, and this is definitely looking like a copy and paste jobby. I want to try and um, make it look like it's further into the background. So I'm going to go into my uh, polygonal lasso tool. I'm just going to create a lasso around this section here. Like so, back up to the top, press enter. And I often like to press control H just to hide that selection. I don't like to see uh, those kind of ant lines 
around the side. So press Control H just to hide it. And that just removes that selection. So I'm going to select the white area here. Uh, I might just make it a little bit brighter. That will do. So back into my brush, I've got my soft brush selected. And I'm just going to very lightly push this into the background. Okay, not too bad. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to experiment with the uh, color balance of this image. So I might go into my color balance again and this time right click and go to create clipping mask. So it's only going to clip to that one image and then I'll experiment with these sliders. So the midtones, I might just make this slightly warmer and with a little bit more red. Then I'll go into highlights and maybe just increase some of the blues and maybe some of the cyans. Yeah, I feel like this is kind of blending in a little bit more of it. Just turn this off. It's a little bit too cool. Now that it's warmer, that definitely suits my interior scene. I might also create a curve and then right click and create a clipping mask of that. And just experiment with these curves. Do I need to make it brighter, darker? It's not too bad there. So turn that on and off and see those results. That doesn't look too bad. Okay, and then like I said, maybe some of the snow has actually trickled in to this scene. So let's get some reference here. Um, let's try, where are we? Let's just copy and paste this in. And sure, you could paint this in. I'm just getting some photos here. Uh, whoops, what's happened there? Copy, make sure I'm on a new layer, paste that in, there we go. Then we can create a mask of this and then just erase the entire thing so we can't see it. Then select the white and now we'll select a textured brush. I quite like this one here. I'm just trying to get the name of that. That one is, let's scroll down, there's an awful lot of brushes. I think this one's called Awesome, is it? Chalk Awesome? Can I find it? Grainy Paintbrush Awesome. Yeah, it's definitely awesome. So let's experiment with this. So the snow's going to try and kind of trickle over here. Maybe if I remove this bit here. There we go. And now I'm just bringing that image back into the scene. So let's make a big clump of it here. Maybe it's a little bit thinner. And then you see a little bit more of it here. Maybe it's even on this chair. Okay, so keep in mind that it's not going to be just totally flat like that. I'm also pressing very lightly on the tablet. You know, think about the 3D form that's currently in that image. So the snow is going to rest on top and then it will fall down into the ground. So that's how I'm going to add those brush strokes. So it's going to be thicker here and then it will fall down like so and make a little clump on the ground. Maybe 
size just a little bit in the tray. Just started to build up, could even be in this cup here. <laughs> that looks pretty good. Okay. So. That should just about do it. And if you feel like that snow was just a little bit too light, we could do the same thing. We can go into our curves, create a clipping mask, and then just bring it down. Okay. Do a before and after and see how that looks. And if, as an example, um, maybe one of these windows were kind of smashed. Let's try and get an image from the other side. So let's just get something like this. I'm going to flip this over to the other side. And I'm going to do a blend div just to try and blend this into the scene. So if I double click on this layer, it's going to bring up my layer styles. And if you move the underlying layer forward, we can see that we can now see through that scene. Okay, so now it looks like we can see outside. And I could maybe duplicate this to the other side if the image is large enough. Let's have a look. Yeah, that will do. I actually kind of like how <laughs> much snow there is there. Um, I'm just going to remove it anyway. Let's remove that. Ooh, actually, I might just use the eraser here and just erase that slightly. I think that looks pretty cool. There we go. If you need to experiment with the opacity, maybe drop it down a little bit if it's too harsh. And like I said, maybe here I'm going to paint in to the scene and just hold Alt to color pick and just paint away some of these um, frames. Let's make it look like it was kind of smashed through. So let's say, for example, this whole section here is now going to be outside. So we want everyone to see this as uh, like a paper door, but this bit is going to be um, smashed through. So this section is going to have a higher contrast than everything else, right? Because this is just paper. Uh, I know <laughs> you wouldn't actually see through even if it was paper. Uh, there's not much um, security if you could actually see through. But in this case, I think it looks pretty cool, so I'm just going to keep it that way. But here, they would have a slightly higher contrast. So I'm going to copy and paste that image back in. Where are we? Let's get back to... Uh, in fact, I'll duplicate this one directly on top. And I'll just remove that blend if. So let's just bring that all the way back. I'll then lower the opacity and then make that selection with the polygonal tool so all around here I'll make that selection I'll then control C control V to copy and paste and then I'll just delete that image that was underneath so you see what I mean now we've got that higher contrast and we can see that that is outside and I might just very lightly paint in the rest of this post Let's do a new layer here. Bring this on top. Make sure nothing here is selected. Just needed to bring that layer directly on top. There we go. 
So now we can create a new layer. And, you know, by all means, name your layers. It's definitely um, good to get in the habit of naming your layers. So here I'm just going to use that marquee tool. Control H to hide it. I'm going to go back into my soft brush. Soft round basic. And then select this uh, white tone. Make it a little bit brighter. Could even change it to a warmer tone in instead. And then let's bring this through. Uh, I've just realized, of course, I don't want to select that. So I'm just going to bring this in that way. I'm then going to use the eraser, which is also set to soft brush, and just lightly erase this. See what it looks like a little bit cooler. I'm just going to delete this and redo that. We could even add some small particle effects. I think in this brush pack. If I go all the way down, I believe it's this one. Scattered dots. I can make this white and then just lightly paint them in. There we go. And now the light is going to shine directly on this cup, so I'm going to need to paint that in. Let's just go back to uh, the tip instead of the name. Go back to my awesome brush and then just lightly paint in this light. Okay. And there we go, we could add even more effects. We could, um, if you want to make it look even colder, we could go back into our um, color balance. Let me just have a look at the gradient map and let's experiment with this. So I'm gonna bring this down so that all of the um, shadows are gonna be much cooler. And then let's click on this one and let's experiment. So. Do I want the outside to look a little bit warmer? Or do I want them to look cooler? Let's experiment with warmer. Let's have a look at that. So here I'm just scrolling through the styles just to see what effect that has on our scene. In this case, I'm gonna say no I don't think we want to do that let's just try multiply and then just bring this down no I don't think I'm gonna add that so let's try something else let's go back to color balance and let's see if we can just make this look a little bit cooler to highlights that looks a lot better so it was still quite warm so I've just made it look a little bit cooler and if you want to add even more smoke effects you could go on to a new layer and perhaps paint those in so here we've got some cloud brushes or smoky brushes and you can paint them As an example, let's just bring that up a slightly. I'll delete this and redo that.
Okay, and there we go. So we've created a narrative just through the lighting, nothing else. And you could keep painting into this, you could add more props. For now, I'm just experimenting with lighting. So if you were to uh, totally change this and change the narrative once again, we can delete all of this. Let's go back to our original. I'm just going to put all of this into a folder. I'm going to keep that curve and let's go back to here and I'll group this with control G. And let's start from the beginning again. So let's have a look. I'm going to close these references down. I'm not going to use them anymore. And this time I'm going to use this light. So I'm just going to copy and paste this into the scene. Whoops. I'm going to copy that one. Copy and paste that. And let's add this light into the scene instead. So am I going to keep everything in that scene? I kind of like this plaque. And I do like these boards as well. So let's just delete all of this. And I'm going to duplicate this. Whenever I'm unsure what, what I'm going to do with that image, I'll duplicate it just in case I want to go back to the original. So I've got two different versions. So here I might just stretch this out. Like so. Let's see what that looks like. Not too bad. And I'm then going to go into this polygonal tool and cut this one out. And let's stretch that once more. If you wanted to um, go into more detail, you could always just cut this out or you could go back to this original image and then just scale this one up and overlay it. So you might want to just delete all of this and delete that background. So something similar to that, you could go back into this image and just delete that frame that was underneath it. In this case, I don't think that looks too bad. Remember when you're creating concepts as well, you haven't got an awful lot of time. So just very quickly apply the image and then paint into it. Okay, that should just about do it. So that image looked a lot warmer than our image. So we're going to have to go underneath that and go back to color balance and we could change it this way. Uh, just thinking about it, we have got uh, something very cool, uh, sorry, something very warm within the color lookup. So I'm going to go here and go to crisp warm or what else have we got? Um, edgy amber, that looks pretty good. And then just bring the opacity down. Now that's starting to match this color. I quite like that. So I'm going to go and do some fine adjustments. So back into color balance. And then I can go, let's go straight to highlights. And let's see if we can just bring some of these highlights back. So I at least want some sort of cool tone there. That looks a bit better. We'll go into midtones. Make it just a little bit cooler with a little bit more cyan. And close that down and then let's have a look. So before and after. That's looking pretty good. If you wanted to just totally remove this section, then you could do that. Uh, we could also go and create another color balance directly on top just to try and blend all this together. Let's bring that back up there. So that's going to make the adjustment on the entire image instead. What you can also do is create the clipping mask and then make the adjustment this way. Uh, so in this case, it needs to be on the layer underneath. Let's create that clipping mask again. And let's just try and make it match the same color. I think that's about right. Yeah, that's it. 
and we could even create a curve with the clipping mask and just bring this down slightly. There we go. Any kind of adjustments, I can go back into my soft brush and then just paint that back out with it set to black. But for now, I think that looks pretty good. So let's keep it that way. So we've got the light shining down here. So I might just make that a little bit brighter. So I'm going to go into brightness and then bring this up. Then go to edit fill and fill this entirely with black. And now I'll paint that light in. So this center area might have a little bit more light. Okay. So I've just copied and pasted some fire here. And I could go through the layer styles. So let's experiment with screen or lighten. And then I can just free transform this down in the center. I think that does a pretty good job. We could also experiment with the blend div. So go back to normal, double click on the layer and then just remove all of the black from the image. So in this case, um, we lose quite a bit of detail. So I'm gonna go and use the screen instead. Can then create a new layer and let's add that effect again. Uh, so we want the, the flames to kind of kick up into the air. So let's add some slight dots here. There we go. That's also going to make this section much brighter. So you might want to paint into that. If you want to add that level of detail, you could use that uh, polygonal tool, go back into your brush and then start painting into it. So I'm going to select that color and then increase saturation. And then you could experiment with just adding a slight color balance here. So in this case, I've made it very warm. I'm then gonna to go to edit fill and make sure this is set to black. And I'm just gonna paint in that glow. Uh, so there's two ways of doing it. You can do it that way and then just bring it back this way. Okay, so it's a bit warmer in these areas. Let's just turn that on and off. You can see that effect. Or you can create a new layer, select red, and then just use that soft brush, paint directly in the center, and then scroll down to something like a, a lighten or a screen, and then just bring the opacity down. Okay, so that's with lighten. And then that is with the color balance. So in this case, I might just use a mixture of the two. That's okay. If you wanted to change the background, you could do something very similar to the technique we used before. So let's say we copied and pasted this image. just drop that opacity down and see what that's going to look like there. Um, that's not too bad right there. So let's just experiment with that. In this case, I'm just going to make this selection instead. Control C, Control V, and then just hide the rest and see what that looks like. It's not too bad. It's going to use that eraser.
and you can do another color balance if you need to and create another clipping mask so you might need to make it a little bit warmer or cooler Just experiment here, just trying to add a little bit of atmosphere at the top. So let's just select this green and then more towards grey. Let's just do something like that. There we go. And you could also add a slight bloom effect here. So I'm just going to select this colour, maybe a little bit brighter. Do something like that and add a blend if. Okay, so it's just a subtle change there. And then any other adjustment, I'll usually press Control, Alt, Shift, and E just to flatten all of that. I'll go into the Dodge tool. So I might just want to make some areas a little bit brighter. So on this pillow, I could just do something like that just to add a little final touch to this concept. finish it by pressing Control alt shift e again if you want a copy just so you can see the before and after and you could add a slight noise just to blend in images if you have added them so i've got this set to one uh, you could also add and people do this quite often um, i don't always use it but you can add a sharpen and a smart sharpen if some of the details are a little bit blurry so you can add a slight sharpen here uh, this original image was very sharpened already, so you might want to erase that one. Uh, but there's the sharpen, and you can also do something like a lens correction to add a slight distortion to the scene, so it looks like it's been taken from a camera. Okay, so that just adds that distortion back in. And then there we go. If I turn this one back on... Let's turn, let's group all of this. So let's group this entire selection. Control G, I'll turn this off. And I'll turn all of this on. Just so you can see, Control, Shift and E. I'll turn that one off. Let's turn that one on. Control, Shift, and E. Can I do that? Control, Shift, E. Is it going to do it? So there we go. Let's just drop all these folders down. Ooh, where's the other one? There we are. There we go. Okay, so... Snowy scene, much warmer scene, okay? Same image, I've, I haven't added too many photos, but I can drastically change the scene just by adding lighting. Okay, so I hope that helped. Experiment with that, get your own images, and see whether you can do something very similar uh, just by adding these effects. So just to summarize here, I've only used the color balance, the color lookup, and the curves to add the lighting. You can then add additional images if you need to. And then 
keep going, keep making the adjustments. You might need to make more color balances, create clipping masks if you need to change the color of that image. And then you can create a seam similar to this. Okay, well done, and I will see you soon. Take care, bye.